Hi, I'm Joel, and today we'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro to create a new composite whole from fragments of music and videos. Yes, we will be creating a montage. Using the steps and features demonstrated in this video, you'll be able to create your own montage. We'll be covering key features of Adobe Premiere, such include keyframing, basic blurs, slow motion, making text fly-ins, and importing slash exporting quality footage. Let's get into it. Just name the montage and click OK. This panel on your screen is the editing panel, so I'll give you a quick rundown on navigating Premiere. Along the top here are all your different panels. Each panel has a new arrangement of windows, and each window will do different things. The panel here is the editing panel, and as the name suggests, it is used for editing. We'll spend most of our time on this panel since we're creating a montage. On the assembly panel, you get a better overview of the media you have imported and you can also arrange a sequence of video and audio tracks. Here I've navigated back to the assembly panel where I can now import my media. I'll be using footage of me playing a car simulator game, Project Cars, in the sweet Rode B Aston Martin V12. Anyway, what can make life easier for you is if you import the high quality video first. If you start by importing the video, Adobe Premiere will match that video's current settings. Thus, when you're ready to export, the correct settings will be there for you already. In the Assembly tab, drag Media into this panel here to create a sequence. Now that I've created a sequence, you can clearly see that two tracks have been made. The track on the top is the video track, and the track underneath is the audio track. This blue bar here is the scrubber. It's going to allow us to sift through the video and find different points of interest. We're going to actually start editing the footage now. So what I'm going to do is go back to the editing panel and find out where the race starts and stops. What Adobe's done for me to make this easier is it's created keyframes. And I can use my arrow keys. See, I'm tapping the arrow here to search through these frames. So I'll find exactly where the race starts and cut the track there. Once the track's been cut, I have to press V to toggle back to my selection tool, select the unwanted bit of track and delete it, pressing the delete key. I'm now going to go ahead and find where the race ends and do the same. What I'm going to do now is create a text flying. It's a really cool way to open up your montage. By clicking the titles panel, we get a whole range of options here. We're going to select the title and we're going to click this button here new title based on current title. Click OK. And now we can add text. I'm going to name this after the racetrack. There's a very simple way to make this text roll across the screen or fly in. We're going to click the button next to the create text and we're going to select roll. We're going to select start off screen and end off screen and we want it to ease out. We select OK. Now in our small media panel, you can see a preview of what we've just made. If we go to our assembly tab, that's made quite more apparent to us. We can drag this straight onto our video, and now we'll have a text flying. I'm going to go ahead and cut up this selection here, so I'm only left with parts of the track that I want to stay in my montage. So like that, I'm just using the mouse to scrub along. When I find the part that I want, I'll back up using the arrow keys to get a very specific frame. Use the razor tool and slice the project. Go back to my selection tool, find the start, and this is the part of the race that I don't necessarily want, and I'm happy to take out as nothing cool is happening here. If you find that when you're trying to cut the track, but it's not precise enough, make sure that this magnet snap is on that way it'll instantly click to this blue scrubber and you can cut the track very precisely here the magnet also comes handy again when you're dragging all your chopped up bits of your montage back into one unit if it's not snapping it's gonna cross over each other and it's going to look horrible. Okay, after evaluating this part of the footage, it's very clustered. There's plenty of other cars on the track 
And what I want to do is make sure that the, vo the viewer is focused on the Aston Martin, the car I'm driving. So to do that, I'm going to use directional blur, and I'm going to blur out all the other non-important cars. To do this, we're going to jump to the edit the, ef the effects window. Select the clip that you want to apply the blur to, and you'll see this new window appear. This new window is very useful. It's how we're going to keep our mask focused on the Aston Martin all the way through the bends. This window here is basically a scrubber, just like here, but for only this clip. See how one moves with the other? Except this one is only applying to this clip here. Make sure you're on the effect control tab. You can see this here at the top left. It says effect controls. Now we're going to go over to the top right and take a look at the effects. There's a search bar here. We're going to search for directional blur. There it is. What we're going to do is drag this either onto the clip we want to apply it to or straight into our effect controls. It won't matter. We're going to add a mask. As you can see by clicking this sphere here, the create ellipse mask, ellipse mask we have created mask 1. We're going to resize this to fit over the car. Use the arrow keys to move it. And now apply the blur. To do this, we're going to toggle the animation. If we add a value to that, now you can see the car has been blurred. But since we want to focus only on the car, we're going to select inverted. Now, as you can see, everything else has been blurred and the car has been left in focus. There is a feature on Premiere Pro that automatically traces this car and will keep, it, keep the mask over the top of the car. By toggling the mask path and track it, the computer will try to keep the car in the focus of the mask. It can sometimes lose focus and that's where you're going to have to manually track the car. I'm going to stop the auto tracing there because already this blue car behind the Aston Martin is creeping into the focus. So what I'm going to do is select the mask layer that brings up my blue circle and I'm going to move it down using the arrow keys just to keep it primarily in focus. Edit that a bit. Now the blue car is not the focus. What I'm going to do is go back to the scrubber, key this with the right arrow key moving the time forward seeing that the car is moving out of focus what I'm going to do once again select the ellipse and using the arrow keys bring that back into focus this can be quite repetitive and that's where this auto mask comes in handy so I'm going to let that run a bit I'm going to stop it here and just make some adjustments and run that again what I'm going to do now is show you how the mask has tracked over the top of the car and I think you'll be able to see where I've manually selected the frames that would be in this area where the frames are more spread out see the mask starts to move now starts to lose a bit of focus there now the tracer latched on to this white car here and it tried to pull away from the Aston Martin and focus on that as you can see there basically the more time you spend on this the better it'll be you know the more frames where you can influence where the mask is going the more exact the layers will be and it will look nicer I just leave it there as all the cars fade out around the corner and you can see that's the end of the clip. Another thing that's important is if you want such an intense blur but not such a sharp edge around where the unblurred area is, you can change that with the feather. If you want to up the intensity of the blur but you don't want such a sharp edge around the unblurred area, that's what mask feather is for. Toggle that on by clicking the stopwatch and increasing this value will increase how soft it is around the edge. 
I'll show you me decreasing the value. And you can see that's just basically that mask itself now. Thanks for watching How to Create a Montage Part 1. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely go ahead and check out Part 2 for a guide on slow motion and audio effects.